Hello, everyone, and welcome to Software Architecture Monday. My name is Mark Richards. In this lesson, number 130, we'll take a look at an architecture anti-pattern called the Frozen Caveman. And now, you can get a complete listing and a catalog of all of the Software Architecture Monday lessons, as well as view them through my website at developer2architect.com slash lessons. Uh, most of my lessons are based on two recent books I wrote with my friend Neil Ford, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture, and most recently, Software Architecture, The Hard Parts. So in this lesson, I'd like to talk about the Frozen Caveman Anti-Pattern. Now, we refer to this on page 31 of our Fundamentals book, but I really wanted to kind of describe it and show the impact of this anti-pattern on architecture. So the frozen caveman anti-pattern manifests in architects who have been burned in the past by poor decisions or unexpected occurrences, and it makes them particularly cautious in the future. And that's kind of one of the definitions or manifestations of the frozen caveman. However, there's another one. It also manifests itself in architects who are frozen in time, like this caveman right here, and base decisions on ancient criteria and technologies. Now, in order to better describe the impact of the frozen caveman anti-pattern and some techniques for overcoming it, let's take a look at a couple of examples. And I want to start really with being burned in the past by things. Here's a couple of examples. And so this frozen caveman here, this architect says, I've, burned, I've been burned way too many times in the past with asynchronous processing using events and messaging. So this solution is only going to use rest. This is a good example of being frozen in time and making decisions based on prior occurrences. As a matter of fact, um, here's another one. I love this one, uh, which kind of relates to the example in our book. Wait, what do you mean the stores lost connectivity on the network during peak activity? Oh no, this has got to be fixed right away or I'll be fired for sure. And it was in fact an emergency. Fast forward 10 years. And this is a good example of the frozen caveman. Wait, what if the network drops between stores? That should be our primary concern here. So one of the ways of kind of avoiding these techniques is actually a quote that we have in our book, The Fundamentals of Software Architecture. And the quote goes as follows. While risk assessment is important, it should be realistic as well. In other words, understanding the difference between genuine versus perceived technical risk is really part of that ongoing learning process for architects. It's one way of kind of overcoming this part of the frozen caveman anti-pattern. Risk may be there, but just because we had a prior occurrence and a prior example doesn't mean that that problem manifests itself every single solitary project and every single solitary time. But I want to show you another example of the frozen caveman anti-pattern. And that is also being frozen in time in terms of antiquated technologies. For example, how about this quote from an architect? I have tons of experience using SOA, service-oriented architecture, and large-scale ESBs, which are enterprise service buses which is why I'm proposing that this solution incorporate these technologies. Or better yet, how about this quote right here from an architect? I've never heard of ReactJS, so for this solution, let's just play it safe and use the well-established JSP and Struts frameworks. You see, this is another example of the frozen caveman anti-pattern. Now, these may not have been experiences in being burned in the future, but it's being frozen in time in terms of antiquated technologies, tools, and frameworks that architects still think are relevant today. And as a matter of fact, Lesson 3, which I recorded almost four years ago, actually identified one of and described one of the ways of overcoming this version of the frozen caveman anti-pattern. Do you remember from lesson three, and as a matter of fact, if you haven't seen it, you might want to pause right here or just continue with this video and then watch it afterwards. But in that video, I described the triangle of knowledge. At the top are things that you know, 
stuff that you know really well. In the middle is stuff you know you don't know. In other words, you're familiar with the technology, you've heard of it, um, but you're not really fully capable of leveraging that technology. And that biggest area down on the bottom is the stuff that you don't know that you don't know. And as a matter of fact, I'm not going to reiterate the whole lesson because I'd really like you to see it if you haven't. Um, but in that lesson, I defined technical depth as the stuff you know, but technical breadth as the stuff you know, plus the stuff you know you don't know. And one of my encouraging statements in lesson three was as an architect, this is the place to focus right here. As a matter of fact, if we look at the triangle of knowledge differences between a software developer and a software architect, you can clearly see this middle area here is absolutely where to focus and where to increase your technical breadth so that we can avoid the frozen caveman anti-pattern and be familiar with the current trends and current frameworks and current technologies and current platforms in our solutions and not be, quote, stuck in the past with a small, narrow technical breadth. Another quote that we had in our book, which might be helpful to kind of end this short uh, lesson here, is that thinking like an architect, what I usually call architectural thinking, requires overcoming these frozen caveman ideas and experiencing experiences, kind of seeing other solutions and asking more relevant questions than those pet problems that you experienced in the past that may not be relevant today. So this has been Lesson 130, The Frozen Caveman Anti-Pattern. I love talking about anti-patterns because most times you can actually relate to these in your own experiences and say, well, actually, at that time I was a frozen caveman. I should probably increase my technical breadth a little bit. So anyways, um, thank you so much for listening. Stay tuned in two more Mondays for the next lesson in Software Architecture Monday.